With the death of Queen Elizabeth II, you're going to start hearing a lot of voices arguing that it's high time we get rid of the monarchy altogether. Although Elizabeth was almost universally beloved, the same can't really be said for her son. So why not just ditch the institution entirely? The usual justification for monarchy is that while it may seem a little silly, it's too hard to get rid of it. But I'm here to argue the exact opposite. This isn't just some weird medieval holdover we have to put up with. Constitutional monarchy is a fantastic way to run a government that maximizes democracy, prevents tyranny, and I pity any country that doesn't have it. Now to be clear, contrary to popular belief, our monarch can't really say or do anything of substance. He's not allowed to vote, and the next time he visits Parliament in the UK, the elected members will force him to change in a room decorated with paintings depicting the time they killed a king who didn't do what he was told. So what's the point? By putting a symbolic figurehead in the top job, you have someone who can deny power to others. No matter how politically powerful you get in Canada, you still have to bow to the king, literally and figuratively. You want to put yourself in charge of the military? Sorry, we've already got someone doing that. You think the court should answer to you? They can't because they already answered to this guy. And this isn't some abstract hypothetical. The United Kingdom is surrounded by places which didn't have this check on power and thus allowed their entire governments to be put in the hands of one guy, who then proceeded to get a bunch of people killed. History is pretty clear that there is a deep dark part in almost all of us that craves a strong man, a powerful person in a fancy hat and a shiny palace who seems to know what they're doing. If you don't have one of these people, you find one. Russia did it, France did it, and the Americans absolutely do it. The US president gets a lifelong security detail, a billion dollar library erected in their honor once they're out of office, and everyone calls them Mr. President for the rest of their lives. Now, have you ever seen a State of the Union address? That's a pretty monarchical thing to do. We and the Brits don't do any of this with our prime ministers. Once they lose, they go work in a law office somewhere until they're dead. All our demigod reverence is harmlessly redirected towards an old woman who likes horses or her senior citizen son who drives a car powered by wine and expired cheese. No less than George Orwell called the British monarch an escape valve for dangerous emotions. It was 1944 and basically all of Europe was in the hands of authoritarian dictators. And for Orwell, one of the main reasons England had avoided all of this nonsense was because they got all the authoritarianism they needed by cheering for their powerless king now and then. 